Good morning. It's Wednesday, May 5th, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, Table Talk, and our scripture is John chapter 14. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but the other disciple with that name, said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not to the world at large? Jesus replied, All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. Some of Jesus' words confused the disciples. It was not that his words weren't plain enough to understand. After all, how complicated it is, if you love me, you'll do what I've commanded you. When I was a young boy, my father asked me to dig a hole. If I respected his wishes, I would have dug the whole hole, not just the five or six shovels full he found when he got back. As a juvenile, I didn't misunderstand the words. I misjudged my actions against the weight of respect. It wasn't my father's fault. I didn't do what he asked, and I demonstrated my lack of love by my disobedience. I just chose playing basketball with my friends over loving or obeying my dad. We did talk when he got back, though. Judas was just trying to wrap his mind around why the Messiah wasn't going to give a full disclosure of his arrival as Lord to the world at large. The disciples were a little dense at this point, failing to see that the announcement was Jesus' love. Now don't sit there shaking your head in agreement about those poor, dense disciples. None of us would have fared better. Jesus' whole point to Judas was that there was to be no fanfare response like some great military conqueror might receive. This was going to be a groundswell movement within people's hearts from day one. It was a kingdom that started on the inside and worked its way outward to all the actions love demands and produces. If you believe because you love, you will behave because love acts consistently with what it loves. Belief produces behavior. Love produces loving. The larger lesson here from this table talk is that the gospel is announced to the entire world by God's church, but it is received one heart at a time. And that was God's intention with it. It's personal between God and those who love God. Note that Judas asked why it wasn't an open declaration to the world at large. Jesus' reply was about individual response. When the heart came to love the chief lover of human souls, the lover would respond by moving in, creating a home of God and individuals. Love would be requited not simply as an earthly king might rule subjects even in a benevolent manner. Rather, this kingdom was going to begin within, stay within, and inspire the outward behavior of a whole lot of spiritual fruit, that which the Apostle Paul would later list for us in Galatians chapter 5. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There's no law against these things. So the takeaway is that God is rarely interested in the pageantry, our ceremonies of praise and adoration, not nearly as much as the processional in the heart that moves from believing to behaving. God is looking for the hearts to build him a home that's constructed with loving response towards that which God loves. It's an inside job that has outward consequences. Much later, after years of reflection, the Apostle John got this concept and he wrote it down for us to understand in 1 John chapter 4. We love each other because he loved us first. If someone says, I love God, but hates a fellow believer, that person's a liar. For if we don't love people we can see, how can we love God whom we cannot see? That's what Jesus told the disciples that day, talking around the table, and that's what he's looking for in those who drag themselves to church out of habit, 
or those who just try to obey the Ten Commandments out of fear of going to hell for being bad. He's simply looking for a little heart love that will result in opening a person's heart door for him to move in with all his love baggage. What a change for those who respond. For you today, when life gets a little tedious or boring or frightful, it's time to check the storage room of your heart. Is there love for God there? Or has something else evicted the one who once lived there? You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.